Hello, everyone, and welcome to Thursday Live Lesson. My name is Aldrin Guerrero, joined by these two fine gentlemen. Mr. Aaron, the voice, now Say What's up, Aaron? What's up? And Kahai, the legend, Fergan. Say what's up, Kahai. What's up? So it's Thursday, 1 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time, and this is kind of our state of the ukulele underground address, weekly state of the you know the underground address because uh, we just basically take questions, we try to answer them as best as we can. Um, if we don't get questions, we'll just talk ukulele or just talk in general. You know, this is just in its like simplest form, just a podcast where we can communicate with you folks. So right on, we get questions via email, via um, Ukulele Underground, whatever we have. We also have a voicemail and stuff that you guys can uh, call in and ask questions from. But, you know, we we also do student reviews that we get via UU Plus forums. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, UU Plus, sign up for UU Plus to take your ukulele playing to the next level. Uh, that's basically our... Um, our premium service over at ukulele underground where you get tons and tons and tons of material including private lessons with yours truly which i've been doing a bunch um ever since the uh, the pandemic started we've uh, we've opened up a bunch of new slots for the uh for the private lesson it's it's been great i've been getting to know a bunch of you guys and i've been kind of you know getting a getting a look into your uh, your practicing habits and what your major questions are so uh, I'm I'm glad I can get to the source and just kind of fix whatever problem lies you know within. So thank you so much for all the people who have signed up so far. Um, this month is wide open, so if you guys want to sign up for private lessons, do it now. So gentlemen, let's get started. First off, Kahai, give me the first question of the day. Yeah, uh, we instead of questions this week, we mm-hmm. had a student review from Wesley. Great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, so we uh, go ahead. Oh no. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He's just a. Uh, He's playing. Um, I think we've seen him play Yasu Joy of Man before, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, he's playing it again. And then he said, like, um, that he the bridge or the break in the the song is his mm. weakest part. But the good thing is mm. that he's actually like anchoring his pinky. He started anchoring yes. his pinky to play mm-hmm. and stuff. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. So um, I, I saw his student review. Very good job. You know, it seems you you're um. You are anchoring. It is kind of getting there, but let me lower the camera here a little bit. So you're you're anchoring kind of like this. You know, I am seeing it kind of uh, lean back a little bit, and you're still kind of playing it this way. When you anchor, that allows you to kind of uh, get your wrists to kind of lift up a little bit. Because notice if you're you know if you're playing the ukulele from the side like this, if if your pinky finger is is uh, is leaning back like so, you're kind of hitting the strings from you know from a straighter angle. You're kind of getting you know the let's see here. Uh, this kind of angle where your pointer finger and your thumb is kind of uh, hitting it this way from, uh, if I were to say, about over, you know, one, 100 and something degrees angle. So you, what, what you <laughs> I don't know what, what, what this would be. It's, it's a lot. I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. What, what do you call those? <laughs> a protractor. <laughs> so I have, no, I have none of that stuff. But anyway, you you want it at you you want to come in at a, a tighter angle like this. So if your uh, if your pinky is kind of leaning back here, see that? So you're getting a very uh very soft, very fleshy attack. But what you want is the attack to be about right here. So it's not necessarily ninety degrees. It's maybe a hundred. You know, it's about right here. Instead of it coming, kind of coming from the side. So if it's coming from the side, it's a little bit softer. Oh, let me see it from here. See that's versus because this way you can kind of get the uh, the nails in. So the side is only gonna really get you the flesh from the side, which is very little flesh and very little density. But if you're hitting it from this angle right here, you're going to be hitting it with flesh and a little bit of nail as well. So the, you don't have to have the nail to have a good uh, a good sound from you know from this angle, but it does help a little bit. But even if not, then you're still getting a, a denser hit with the uh, with with the flesh rather than just getting it from the side like this, uh, not very dense. So the the sound is gonna be a little bit more on the flatter side, uh, not not flat as in like uh, tone, <laughs> like tone is flat, but um or two tuning, not a flat tuning, but just it sounds flat like there's no you know 
what's what's the word I'm looking here for, for guys? Like it's, it's projection more, or like yeah, it's a, yeah. like a thicker sound. You know, it's yeah. thin. There you go. I'll just say thin, and so it's like a thinner sound. Um, so you want the angle to be a little bit. Other than that, I think you know you're doing a good job. There is the part in the middle that you're talking about where um where it starts to kind of uh not necessarily fall apart like you you know like you were saying but it's just it's not as uh, as strong as um as the yeah i don't know what key i don't know what key he was playing i think he was playing it in d um but if you're you know if, if you're kind of playing that first part it sounds like you know there's movement going on it, it, it's you know it, the finger picking makes sense there's a lot of like different notes and melodies but once you get to that middle part it's just like or whatever you're you know whatever you're doing there and it just sounds like it's just by itself okay if you're doing something like that see if you can uh, add a little bit more notes in there so it's it's almost if you imagine it you are playing with two hands on the piano you know like when you were playing the first part and then when you got to that second part it was just the right hand doing just the melody line there was really nothing kind of backing it up so you can still do that and and do you know do the uh, do the effect that you were doing but then you know kind of uh finger picks so you can do something like so or, or anything you know you can kind of you don't even have to uh have a counter melody to it you can just kind of play the the background chord because that you know that's being played on top of a chord if you play the chord behind it and if you uh, you can still do you know the the little technique thing that you were doing um, other than that, I think that's, you know, it, it sounds a lot better. I, I feel that like the uh, the anchoring um, really helped a lot e as far as movement goes, you know, that that really helped you because it doesn't sound like um, uh, the, the technique is there. So you're kind of thinking about less about the technique here on the right side and really focusing on getting the, you know, the movements on the left hand. I liked it. Um, I, I, I am seeing, you know, uh, improvement so keep it up but other than that just work on those points what do you think yeah mm -hmm. um i think uh, uh that middle part too mm -hmm. it's like um uh and i know he he kind of already identified that that's like the weakest part of yeah. the song but um uh it reminded me of when i was playing piano and when i would play piano and i could, would play a song and mm -hmm. like you know, uh, like a bunch of those classical songs, like Fairly's and Ulti Joy, play the mm -hmm. parts that I know, and then get to the parts that I don't know. My mm -hmm. piano teacher would tell me like, it sounds like you're looking for the notes, not like you're mm -hmm. playing the notes. And it kind of mm -hmm. sounds like Wesley's doing the same thing. So it's like it's mm -hmm. not like he he knows where the notes are going, and he's yeah. like reading the notes. He's still mm -hmm. like trying to figure out like oh third fret on the a string and then he plays it and then it looks like he's like mm. looking at his hand and he's like oh i'm on the second string so i gotta slide it up to the third string right yeah. it's like yeah yeah just like um maybe if he should uh isolate just like just that just part the second part yeah and then go like you know uh, like really do it like uh take it by either phrases or by um you know even uh um measure is, by measure yeah yeah measure i was trying to think of the word measure mm -hmm. yeah and yeah, uh, slow it down yeah. kind of with learning probably mm -hmm. it sounds like you got the beginning part because like i think everybody knows the can hum the melody for that that song it's one of those famous songs right mm -hmm. um but then the middle part is like kind of one of those things where it's like people don't know it as much and so mm -hmm. maybe he's like when he got to that part he's like Mm, he's like still trying to figure out what it sounds like yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah uh, i also wanted to address the um the buzzing because he was saying that like you know he took his uh his tenor ukulele then like he tuned it all the way down to a uh, to a baritone tuning which is totally fine you know uh, I've, I've done it before but one thing you do have to watch out is because the strings are so loose because you know you have basically lowered the uh, the tension um you're you know you're gonna have to be careful because you can it, it's not uh it's not impossible to play you know w to play a song without um having the buzz because you can't it's all a matter of a, you know of, of attack on the strings 
and uh, and how accurate you're kind of landing on those notes. So when Kahai is saying that, you know, like it's, it seems like you're kind of looking for the notes, it becomes more obvious that you were looking for the notes because of the buzz. Like you will hear the buzz because it's not like that finger wasn't, you know, wasn't kind of planted firmly there or it wasn't like uh, there, there was no confidence in that. So the, the attack was, you know, was a little bit different. And, um, and the way that you place your finger, there was a little bit more different. It, and you can tell when you have the confidence in in the you know in the phrase because the phrase sounds good and then once you start to lose confidence that's when the buzzes start coming out it's because that you know that attack and that kind of touch on the left hand has to remain exactly the same to keep it from buzzing oh so he was he was using just regular sh ukulele strings but tuned, so. bar tuned baritone down. yeah yeah oh so that's the reason why i was kind of like because 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 it's so loose mm -hmm. um it seemed like when he was pushing down when he was fretting mm -hmm. he was like uh when he pushed down harder the the string would get sharper yeah yeah maybe you know mm -hmm. so he like because you know you can do that right you can press mm -hmm. down a little yeah. bit harder and the and the note mm -hmm. gets sharper mm -hmm. but it, that's even more pronounced when you have like really loose or mm -hmm. not high tension strings mm -hmm. so so yeah maybe maybe it's just a matter of getting um like dedicated strings for that purpose and then yeah. you, won't, you yeah. won't run into that problem as much because we talked about craig and sarah's kind yeah. of baritone tuning set for regular mm -hmm. tenor regular ukulele tenor. Mm -hmm. so that yeah i was i was kind of wondering about that myself like yeah. why why does it seem like because because i know that he plays um the eight string right so yeah. i was thinking oh maybe he's just gripping harder because he's mm -hmm. used to the eight string mm -hmm. But um, but that's that's the reason why is because he's tuned down. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't and, even realize. And there's that part that he's doing that you know that technique. So that technique comes even you know even more. Different. Yeah, it's like yeah, yeah, it it wavers even more than mm, he probably yeah. meant he thinks, for it yeah. to mm -hmm, be. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it was kind of like vibrato to the max. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's vibrating to the next note. <laughs> yeah, to the next note, to the next like half step already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but other than that, I thought it was you know thought it was okay. You just kind of have to be careful when you're making those kinds of like experimentations with your ukulele. You know, because mm -hmm. not only is experimenting with it, you know, with the tuning, with the size of the ukulele, but like you know, approach on that part, like because yeah, that's, yeah. So it's it's tough when you're kind of stacking all these odds against you in the song. You know, you really have to be careful. Yeah, and then even on the you know that the first section where mm -hmm. he kind of seems like he has it down already um it seems like uh the triplets mm -hmm. were kind where they were staggered like exactly the same uh -huh. apart you know yeah. whereas you should think of it as grouped into threes so mm -hmm. da, 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 da 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 so emphasize the first first note and then follow it up with the other two Mm -hmm. and then um and then the next set of three do the same thing mm -hmm. to to kind of like group them together because if mm -hmm. you just say da 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 it's very yeah. different than da 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 so if it's if it's grouped like that naturally you should mm -hmm. kind of emphasize that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah. Other than yeah. that, it's it is coming together. I, yeah, I like yeah. it. Yeah, sounds better. <laughs> sounds better. Yeah. I think yeah. like uh, that thing too that I was saying earlier where he's like looking for notes too. something mm -hmm. that makes it kind of obvious. And I don't know if it's like the sheet music is written this way is like sometimes he plays like he, he'll play, you know, like the third fret and then the second fret. And instead of playing the third fret with his middle finger and doing like a pull off to the second fret or just playing the second fret with his pointer finger, he does like a slide with his his pointer finger and sometimes mm. it seems like he plays like notes you know on the same string in consecutive order with just the pointer finger and like to me that may like it kind of seems like uh it doesn't seem as clean as yeah. like <laughs> using your multiple yeah. fingers you know to play those different notes so i don't know if it's like the sheet music is telling him like you need to slide to here. slide yeah. yeah or or it's like there's something there but if mm -hmm. it's just because like he's not used to to using, you know, going from like his pinky to his middle or his middle to his pointer, that might be something he might want to 
try and incorporate more if the sheet music doesn't say specifically for it or even if it does like just to make the music i think it'll make the attacks sound cleaner yeah because then when you do that it sounds like oh it, it kind of adds to that sense of uncertainty like you're not really sure where you're supposed to land yeah yeah did did he say he arranged it himself or did uh, is he following and you know someone's arrangement some sheet music uh i don't know i, I don't he didn't say but mm. um i i kind of feel like i can see him looking at something mm-hmm. so i'm guessing <laughs> yeah. he's like looking at yeah. cheat music or some kind of he might have like wrote it out himself. yeah like, some kind of like mm-hmm. cheat sheet or uh what is it mm-hmm. like a uh, fake sheet <laughs> yeah yeah because um mm-hmm. i remember we did that that bach tune together and we had a private lesson on it and he sent me like just like handwritten sheets so uh, i don't know if like oh. himself yeah but um yeah like if it you know if, if it is that you know you don't have to do if it is arranged by someone else and like and kind of gave you the you know like the the song sheet for it and stuff you um if it says to do like to do something but it doesn't sound right to you or doesn't you know like it doesn't seem like that's what you should be doing um you don't always have to agree <laughs> with the, yeah, with the, <laughs> with the sheet music. music i don't you know like uh but it's i mean you, you know really just um, trust your instincts when um, you know when you're like oh, this isn't quite sound right because if that was it you know like I wouldn't be picking like five different versions of ultimate guitar chords before I choose the right one the, the, the correct one you know, it's like this this doesn't sound you know like I'll go to a different arrangement or this I'll go to a different version the real one brought a version you know like <laughs> it's it's always you know it's always going to be kind of your own judgment to see like how you get from one note to the other but it'll it, um the notes sound right you know i think but i i feel like it's just the movement from one to the other or the technique used um is something that you can you know you can add to your well, for yourself mm-hmm. yeah yeah Mm-hmm. Yeah, right on. So we are live. This is Thursday live lesson. So we do have a chat that's going on right now, and you guys can chat along with us if you guys are you subscribers who are watching this live. Um, so Kai, do we have anything from the chat, or are they just kind of commenting on what we're saying? Uh, yeah. Uh, Chris asked where he can mm-hmm. get the new sets of AG AQ strings. Um, currently, right now, at the uh, on the Aquila sites. Did I say that right? Aquila, <laughs> the Aquila yeah. site. Um, that's that's where you can that's where you can get. I believe it's like, um, let's see here. This is the website. Aquilacorde.com. So A Q I, uh, no A Q U I, L A C O R D E dot com. Aquilacorde.com. And that's like their Italian site. You can find this and in, in, uh, in the other, what you call uh, the other sizes and whatnot. Which speaking of which, um, they I I put something up on Instagram like to uh, to promote these and stuff. And then um, the, my 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 contact from uh, from from Aquila is like, oh, can you guys can you send me that picture because uh, we're we're gonna run an ad like on Ukulele magazine or or UKE magazine or something. And I'm like, dude, I took that with my phone. Like, can I, <laughs> like, can I take it? Like with uh, you know, um, with with like a good camera, and then I'll send you that one instead. They're like, oh, okay, but they were like, totally fine with just like the iPhone picture, you know? Like I'm not calling them out or anything, no. but I'm like, I I do want to put my best foot forward <laughs> instead of like, like an Instagram picture that we're just kind of ripping off, you know? But uh, I do have some ideas, and and I've actually, um, I'm not. Uh, my wife is the photographer, but when uh when i was when i was younger on oahu like i really loved like taking pictures especially like of toys and stuff like i was kind of this weirdo photographer wannabe guy and um and i'm pretty excited so to go from like from from toys and deviant art to like being on possibly on you like ukulele or uke magazine like for something <laughs> i took I'm pretty excited about that, guys. <laughs> I was telling Heather, I'm like, see, it's not that hard to get published, Heather. I don't know why you're having such a hard time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know why, you know, I don't know why you, you find it so difficult. I, I did it, you know. I just, I'm, I'm about to do it now. It's, it's fine. <laughs> I studied how to, how to photograph things for like five minutes and then published. <laughs> 
That's like the. Oh, she, does, she does not like that joke. <laughs> oh. The, that's like the the meme that is like, oh, I watched the YouTube video, so I'm basically an expert at this, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So she's like, how does that work? I'm like, I don't know. You were going to just take my, my Instagram photo and just, and just <laughs> print that. It, <laughs> it would have been funny if uh, Aquila did do that. Because, like, mm-hmm. I can guarantee, like, right, like, they send it to Uke Magazine and Uke Magazine would be like, mm-hmm. uh, we can't print this. This, is, <laughs> you know, there's like a printing quality. We got to, like, we, yeah, we can't do that. <laughs> It's not the right, like, DPI or whatever yeah. it is, you know? <laughs> <laughs> 72 is enough, right? <laughs> <laughs> you can kind of read it. It's <laughs> enough dots. How, yeah. how accurate does the color really need to be? <laughs> you don't really need oh. to see it. Yeah. Hilarious. Yeah, she does not like that joke. It was pretty funny. Oh. It's, like, it's like, see, you know, if you... If you work hard, just like me, at your at your photography craft, <laughs> you too can. Uh, <laughs> oh, who doesn't like it? <laughs> anyway, yeah, I just thought you guys might have a kick out of that. <laughs> she's a she's an actual photographer. <laughs> <laughs> actual photographer. Now she's been published and stuff, but it's just it's like, see, I don't know why you you think it's so hard. It's you know, I I'm about to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh man. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> before I get in trouble with my wife, <laughs> let's. Uh, is there any other um, live questions, Kahai? Um. So like, Devin is like. Uh, I sent him the link to the site, the uh, mm-hmm. Akilo site, and mm-hmm. like the thing about like because uh, I went there too, is yep. like you can pick your um your set. You know your string set, and then uh, mm. if you want GCEA or or the baritone tuning, yeah. But then, or like, it DVD. seems like at the very bottom is where you can add on a low G. So, dev, like, some people are asking if, like, they're kind of trying to figure out if that's like you're gonna get a set with a low G, or it's just like the low G is added on afterwards, you know. And then they they have it marked as like red, the red low G, so. Okay, let me see here. It's kind of yeah. We, I mean, we just gotta get sets for our store, <laughs> yeah, and then people can just buy it at our it. store. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but for now, that that's that's where it's at. We're trying to get some for the store, so it'll be a mm. lot easier. So it's not like you're waiting for a package coming from Italy or anything like that, you know. So, um, yeah, we'll 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 uh we'll we'll get there. Okay. But for now, if you guys wanna. You know, just go for it. If you really want it now, <laughs> you mm-hmm. can uh, you can order it from that site, or just wait until we get some. All good. All good. The <laughs> the red string that they're offering though, it's basically mm-hmm. the it's the same string, but then it's mm-hmm. not brown. That's the the only difference, right? Like probably. Um, let's for see. the low G. I'm going right now. It's like in in Italian. Yeah. <laughs> so it should be. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess you, you gotta can go... change it to. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. There yeah. it is. There's like a. There's like a. Oh, okay. It's like a button. See, I don't. I should really research this, <laughs> but uh, let's see. If I'm, I'm trying to buy one right now, let's say tenor tuning, G C E A, uh, uh, set low G. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, it seems it's from the red series, but it's it's actually the um like the chocolate the chocolate brown. I'm sure. I mean, they're not gonna give you one that's not the chocolate brown. That's when we have problems, Akula. But you know, like uh, <laughs> I'm I'm pretty sure they're gonna um it, it maybe they just marked it as red series, but it's it is uh it it's probably because it's it is from that that on one um on one series, but it's just brown instead of red. Mm. But it's coming from that. That's kind of where we pulled it from. I like the sound of it. It is unwound, and that's kind of what was available, and that's what we went with. Yeah, because that that whole like series yeah. of strings are just called red. Yeah, right? called the yeah. red series. Yeah. yeah, but it's not necessarily that color. It's, it will be brown. So yeah. that makes sense. Uh, just, yeah, yeah. Just rest assured. And if not, then contact me, and I'll go yell at them. <laughs> no, <I'm> just, <laughs> uh, yeah, just if if not, if it doesn't, then let me know because it should. 
that's that's all I'm, that's all I'm saying. Uh, but I believe that's it's just called Red Series. And that's why there's like the R like trademark, you know, like on on the Red Series because I just believe that that's what these um this type of string is called this uh, this this brown string that we use for the low G. It's from the uh, from the Red Series, but it will be this color. Okay. Have you have you gotten to str string up a uh, uke with the new set? Ah uh, yes, but oh man, yeah, I should have. Uh, I can show it tomorrow. I did. I I strung up my um, uh, that's ali kumakani ukulele that I use with low G. That's strung up with that. It sounds it sounds good. I like it. Hmm? Cool. Um, it is a little bit drier than than these. You know, than than the than the green. But it's kind of cool because, like, you know, like how um, the the wound string feels a little bit different, like when you play it and stuff. So it's got that, but it's not wound. So you know that it's like that kind of low G. It's cool. I like. It. I dig it. It has that without the like. Yeah, without the actual. Squeak. Wound. Yeah, yeah. It's just a little bit drier. So the the feel is like, oh, it's a low G. You know, you're like, okay, that's that's what it's supposed to feel like, but um, but it's not like wound. You know, I like. Yeah. I dig it. I, I don't know if we can get a closer look at that. The brown of against the green. It's cool. I love the, <laughs> the if I could eat it. <laughs> I love the two What's sides that? of like unwound and wound strings, uh -huh. and then it's like uh you know with, with you players who are trying uh wound string for the first time, it's like oh this is weird. And guitarists who <laughs> like you know will try like a low G be like. I don't see what the problem is. This is what uh -huh. every guitar is like. Classical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, yeah. What? Like, uh, sure. And then there's some people who are like, oh, no, I swear it has to be wound or it has to be unwound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Any other questions? Uh, Live questions. No, it looks like. Questions. Looks like that's it. Yeah. Right on. Um. Yeah, we don't really have anything to talk about, so we'll just talk about whatever, guys. Um, <laughs> so with uh, just just in case you guys uh, you guys haven't yet, please check out our brand new play along channel. We just posted a a brand new play along on that new channel, and every other play along that we're gonna release um after you know after that one will be released on that new channel. So make sure you go to YouTube. And, uh, and check out that channel. Do we don't have a a, a link to it yet? Do we? Uh, not or uh, or well, like or we, we can have link. the the actual <laughs> link. Okay, so um, if you guys are listening, you know, listening to this as a as a replay, should be on the uh, on the description or on the show notes. Um, but if you just go to our channel, I believe we have that uh, that video on the on the play along playlist, right? So if you go to that new video, which is what's going on by Marvin Gaye, um, excuse me, uh, just subscribe to the channel that it was uploaded to. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you know, I, I did. Uh, pe people were wondering why we're why we're migrating, and my I mean my short and pretty accurate answer is just to you know basically organize the site. You know, we've put up everything under one you know like <laughs> one youtube <laughs> channel and you know and it's 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 tough for people to be like well i just want to watch this or i just want to watch that you, you shed a little bit more light on that and just be like just, it is really just to organize stuff right yeah if you want to subscribe to all of the new play alongs that are coming out then you just subscribe <laughs> to that channel <Yeah. laughs> and then if you want to see you know the the replays of the jams or mm -hmm. the replays of this show yeah. That'll be continue to be put on our regular channel, uh, youtube.com slash ukulele underground. And then yeah. the new new channel should have its own kind of custom link soon. Mm -hmm. But we have to reach 30 days first. So. Yeah, so, you know, it's, it's not something like that we were like, okay, we're going to plan out this major whatever launch. It's really just as a cleanup. We're like, you know, we, we just want you guys to uh, to have a place where like, I just want to watch just the play alongs. And then mm -hmm. that's, that's, that would be it, you know? So it's not like, uh, you know, this, this is going to mark a new, you know, like a new era for whatever ukulele on the ground. No, it's just a matter of cleanup really we're just we're just doing our summer cleaning if you can think of it that way <laughs> and the uh, and the follow-up questions i would you know i would get is that like uh, is that going to happen for you know for the other videos as well and we don't know you know maybe like 
Uh, maybe we'll do a just like a podcast channel for just this this pod or for like a little Friday live jam. But who knows? But right now, the <clears throat> the videos that people mostly watch are those play along videos. So if we can, uh, you know. Uh, make sure that we get that cleaned up first and um, that easier for people to find. I think it'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. So then mm-hmm. others will, we'll, you know, we'll see what we'll do with others if uh, based on how this one, how this one goes. Yeah. But make sure to subscribe. The, and the... then hopefully we can put together um, new types of videos, still play alongs, but new, mm. uh, not just like the monthly lessons, yeah. like we... more, more actual play along videos that you can play along with some cool stuff too. Yeah. So... Some ideas. I'm stoked. I'm so stoked. That's going to be, yeah. be cool. It's going to be cool. Yeah. I've been working, I've been working on them. Just, I don't want to, I don't want to say too much <laughs> working on these, like these new play alongs that we're about to do. I'm so stoked. You guys should get hyped. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Be awesome. I don't know. Oh, man. Some of it is maybe not play alongable, but it'll be, <laughs> <laughs> it'll be fun to watch. It'll be a play along. <laughs> yeah. It'll be fun to watch. It'll be a play along. And I don't know, just a musician is a challenge to me. I don't want to see anymore. <laughs> I don't want to get rid of it. Okay. But just, Get hype because that new channel it's it's gonna be it's gonna be great it's gonna be great I, I can't I can't wait I can't wait just Aaron you know Aaron's approach to videos and ideas for videos like um for example like when we did the um <clears throat> the ukulele challenge I kind of had an idea of like what you know like what you wanted it to look like. But then once I finally watched that first episode, I'm like, yeah, that's it. It's even better than I thought it was going to be. You know, it's like, it's so like Asian variety show. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> like, I I love that that was like kind of the, uh, you know, the um, the inspiration for uh, for what Ukulele Challenge was. And then um, sure enough, we, we did that video where we figured out... Um, uh, the, what's his name? I don't want to say... Gen Hoshino. Name. Yeah, you know, the, the ukulele player. Oh, Daichi? Yeah, da- Daichi. I was going to say Daisuke. See? See? <laughs> <laughs> Daichi. That's right, one. <laughs> Ichi. Yeah. So, like, uh, we had to do that uh, Daichi video. And that's, like, when you went full Asian. <laughs> <laughs> you went that full was like, Asian in that video. That was actually thanks to Ryan. Because oh, really? Ryan... Yeah, like, Ryan was, you know, he was studying <laughs> Japanese. Yeah. And then he had, you know, language exchange partners in Japan. Yeah. So he asked his language exchange partners. And they came up with, like, you know, some good approximations mm-hmm. for what you yeah. were saying. So yeah. that's all, like, semi-legit <laughs> Japanese. You know, it's not perfect, but it's, like, you know, it's actually semi-legit Japanese that was in the video. <laughs> so <laughs> That is so cool. Like I, yeah. And I, I mentioned it because I was, I was, like, re-watching a lot of the stuff. Just kind of getting, you know... Getting to um, getting to know our older content to like make some new content, you know. Mm-hmm. I'll just say that, and um, and I'm like, this is this is fun. It was fun to make, and it's even like, <laughs> more fun to like watch how it actually came out. And when you went full Asian, I'm like, yeah, that's it. That he stepped in the gas. He floored it on on this. One. It's so good. So good. I I do miss I miss making ukulele challenges, and and I hope we we make another one soon because I. Mm-hmm. I miss me being challenged, but you're definitely challenging me on these new videos. <laughs> I, can't, I can't say stuff, but anyway, Kahai, do we have questions from the live audience before I say too much? Yeah, yeah, and then uh, the the play along channel too. Like mm-hmm. to get to there, you can go to the our main channel where or where the channel where we have the jams and the live lessons posted. And then in the related side, like I think sidebar, like right next to it is like related channels and it's right there too. So mm-hmm. it okay. should be easy to get there. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Jim from or <laughs> Jim from Australia, he said, uh, I know Aldrin has talked about techniques for playing harmonics in the past, but I have a short term, a short memory retention. <laughs> so I guess he just wants you to go over uh, harmonics, harmonics again. Yeah. Okay. Um, the basics. Of course, 12, 7, 5, you know, that's where the basic harmonics are going to be. And uh, for those of you folks who don't know what harmonics are, it's this. So it sounds like bells, you know? Chime like, sound. Uh, chimes, yeah. Uh, we used to call it chimes. I don't know. Chimes. Harmonic. Yeah, that's what we call that like in high school. It's like, oh, can you do the chimes? Like, yeah. <laughs> so that's that's what harmonics uh, are. And there's, um, there's a little bit weaker, but still, you know, um, audible. On the seven and on the five. Can you guys hear that? 
but it's definitely loud at the 12th. Now, um, one of the uh, secrets, quote unquote, is to you know take your um, take your finger and put it on the uh, fret wire closest to the front. And what I mean by that is if, say for example, you want to do the 12th fret. So this is my 12th fret. You want to be over this fret wire that's closer to the sound hole rather than closer to the uh, the headstock. So over here, not here or the middle. You'll get a better sound. So here it is. So my microphone is here. So here it is from the middle. Here it is from on top of that fret. It's just a lot longer. Now if it's behind, it's just not even going to come out. Mm -hmm. Okay, make sure you get it at the, um, yeah, at, at that, <laughs> right? Right after the, um, or, or, or the fret wire closest to the sound hole, okay? Mm -hmm. um, I like to use my ring finger most uh, most of the time if we're doing like 12 fret stuff because my ring finger is uh is a lot weaker than my pointer and middle fingers so because it's so weak that um when i place it on top it's actually perfect for uh for the harmonics because you need to be you need to just kind of butterfly kiss it and if you want to watch the other uh thursday live lesson where we talked about this is called butterfly kisses because that's really what it is you're you're doing a butterfly kiss to the top of that fret wire okay so you're not like pressing it down you're just placing you know your your finger on top of the string so i'll show you from this angle here so this is me pressing down on that fret and this is me doing just the uh, harmonic on that press playing the fret and this is the harmonic okay so you're just placing it on top of that as soon as you hit it with your right hand you want to let go That's why it looks like it's bouncing because I'm playing that, you know, that string and I'm letting go. Because if I uh, if I kept it there, it doesn't have uh, it doesn't have room to uh, to vibrate because you want that string to vibrate. Okay. Because you're playing it over the uh, the fret wire. That's why you uh, you know and, and it's. Um, that that string wants to vibrate so if you're playing it and you're holding that you know that finger there it, it doesn't have any place to ring out okay you need to take it off because you can hear the harmonic but if you let it go it can really ring out okay now those are the basics uh, there is artificial harmonic because the 12 is the um you, you know it is the is the loudest the mid, midpoint. Yeah, midpoint of the you know of the strings because uh, from where the nut is in the saddle that's the midpoint now you can create artificial harmonics where you can you're creating artificial midpoints on the ukulele so for example the third fret here so the midpoint would be third fret up here past the 12th fret so here's the 12th fret and you just count one two three just like one two three past the um uh, past the nut so because I don't you know I, my my pinky finger or my ring finger doesn't stretch out like that far to uh, to, you know, to to get that you can use your pointer finger to do the butterfly kisses while the thumb in the back so it goes looks like this where I'm using my thumb to kind of to pick the pick the note or pick the string and then my pointer finger to do the butterfly kisses so it looks like this And uh, in that sense, you can actually move, you know, like a scale, as um, just as as well as you can move your, you know, your right hand pointer finger to hit all those notes. So, for example, to do that, and I mean, advanced stuff is like you can make chords, and you're kind of playing, you know, playing those chords. So, like an E minor, I'll be using my my thumb to make that E minor kind of chord shape. Yeah, to get to get that you know E minor chord. That's like super duper advanced. I don't see really the need for it uh, unless you know like you're you're using it in, in a solo or something. Um, there are times where I do use my my thumb as well. So sometimes I'll be doing a uh, finger picking with my pointer and middle, doing the Running Man. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, check out the. Uh, 
the video series by Imu Garza. The run I'm doing the Running Man, and then the thumb is uh, is what I'm using to uh, to to do the um, the harmonic. So like something like so I can do a run like <laughs> there it is there. There. <laughs> it's almost there. So you kind of so that's yes. That's even like off the fretboard, right? Yeah, that you're cause it's here because G. There should be a G here somewhere. So I'm yeah. guessing. There it is. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I've yet that's to far play. beyond what yeah, most people will <laughs> will need. <laughs> Let's just even say that. Need. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to uh, to to do that. But no, you don't need to add like you know augmented. 15 sevens eight nine tens either you know but like people do that so <laughs> yeah because you can <laughs> yeah you yeah. know you don't have to do like half toads but people do like we uh -huh. were just talking about what's his face last like last week or two weeks ago and you know and people do but that's just the thing that um yeah i i taught it to um to rio and to um what's his name ah, do you People, these people are gonna get mad at me because they're like, my name is, you know, uh, Rio. So Rio and Rio, <laughs> <laughs> they're the same name. <laughs> it's the same. So I taught it to those two guys in the back of a um, of a car in Korea, and they really ran with it. I thought, I, um, I think I saw an arrangement that um, that Rio played, not Toyama, and he used that technique for. I'm like, ooh, I taught him that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Because I remember doing it. Doo -doo 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 and Rio was like, "What is that part right and that, what that you did, did you, there? Yeah. Like, what'd you do?" And I'm and I showed him. And then uh, Rio, the you know the younger the younger kid, Rio, he's like, "What?" And I'm like, "Ah, <laughs> ah, ah! I could teach these young whippersnappers something. And I'm like, I, I will lay claim to that one." <laughs> they don't, yeah, they don't know everything yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's for me, uh, you know. For what I do, it's kind of useless because, <laughs> like, when would I ever use that? But for high level guys like that, I guess they can find ways to do it. Like, kind of like, mm -hmm. why why would half tones, you know, why would you need half tones? But for a high level guy like Jacob Collier, it's like, oh, yeah, like this. I'm like, oh, that's how you use that. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, any other questions, guy? Uh, yeah. From... Oh, do you want to add something? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, there's a few things. Like, mm -hmm. um, I think the the harmonics thing it really is like a touch and timing thing so mm -hmm. you you really and even though we can explain like you know the basic idea of it you have to do it yourself to figure it out because it's just like yeah. it's hard to explain like exactly like you want to hit it and then release almost exactly after and mm -hmm. you have to have just the right amount of touch to get it to make that bell so yeah mm -hmm. it is like just something that even though and i know some people are like oh I, i'm trying to research everything before i actually try it it's one of those techniques that you have to try you know and it, it kind of just comes <laughs> together jump in the pool yeah, yeah. it comes together I, when you actually try it yeah um i don't know if there's any high level players listening to this you know this podcast but one new thing that i've been experimenting with is um using like people people call it double stops but it's not double stop it's basically mm. harmony doing harmony using two fingers and using these two fingers to uh, to play the notes so the e and the a are being you know played by your thumb and your ring finger but then your pointer and middle finger are are playing the two notes to a uh, so like that so you can actually do harmony you know to a like that oh so it's like a little bit so, cleaner than the thumb yeah. method because the, the thumb is it's like this yeah cleaner than the thumb method you know but uh because because the, the thumb you know it's uh you have to kind of angle it at the right you know the, the right way to kind of get that but then this way is just kind of moving your pointer and and um in, in middle around whereas these two are playing notes and then this is kind of doing that so for example if i'm playing these two notes here do and I can move it. Oh, um, I'm still ex it's still an experimentation yeah. and stuff, but that's another useless like thing that I've uh, <laughs> I've started doing that I can't you know I can't really take advantage of. But if there's any high level players that want to do that, take it. It's 
It's a free gift. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> free gift for me. Yeah, Take if it. you could get really good at yeah. that, you could do some really crazy mm-hmm. harmonic mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah, because imagine you doing like... See. <laughs> and doing that in 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 harmonics and stuff yeah. is like next level. You know what I mean? Like, but you have to be super <laughs> accurate, and yes. you have to be yeah, really but good. That's, that's just something that I've been kind of experimenting with. That I'm like, I'm I'm not gonna get this. Someone else is gonna, <laughs> gonna do this. I might as well reveal it so that that part, like the You're creating part, the you know? sediment layer that they can build on. They can top build on of. top of it. There it is. Go, young ones. <laughs> yeah. Go, my young yeah. padawans. Feng I, E. Yeah, Feng. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Do it, Feng. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's something I've been experimenting with because this quarantine has gotten me kind of like music crazy. So I've been like thinking up some stuff. So I'm glad you brought up the uh, uh, gym. I'm glad you brought that up because I, I got a chance to share this thing that I've been experimenting with. <laughs> That uh, that thumb harmonic, right, mm-hmm. where you're you're using your thumb in front of your your uh the rest of your fingers mm-hmm. to play harmonic. Yeah, that comes from uh, electric guitar, right? Like uh, and electric guitar they call it squealies, cause they... oh this the thumb one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The uh, this one comes from uh, classical guitarists. Yeah, that's classical artificial. Guitars, art- artificial. Yeah, artificial. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, but like the squealies even like Squealy, you, yeah. you don't really hear it with acoustic guitar players even because mm-hmm. it's like it's I don't like it's easier yeah. to play with a, a amplified guitar right and mm-hmm. when you play it it makes that like uh if you listen to I don't know like Van Halen or like any of Steve those like, yeah m- metal <laughs> guys like mm-hmm. when they they hit a squealy it just sounds like a high pierce like noise with distortion mm-hmm. right and then mm-hmm. a lot of times they'll hit it and then add vibrato to it too the, the, the whammy bar yeah mm-hmm. yeah so like yeah, I, I got inspired from steve i like that was where i got that that technique from mm-hmm. yeah so like you the even with acoustic guitar it's like uh you can do it but like you don't really see it because like they, they don't have the amplification they don't have the whammy bars or anything but that kind of just goes to show you like and even that <laughs> It, it's kind of I don't know. It's ridiculous to call har- harmonies double stops, right? Because it's not a hard technique with no. ukulele or guitar or whatever. Mm-hmm. But all of these things, like you can kind of take uh, inspiration, or you can try and look at techniques from other instruments mm-hmm. and go like, I just like I wonder if I tried it on ukulele mm-hmm. or I tried it on See this instrument. Sound. Yeah, like what mm-hmm. it, what it would do. And, and you brought up Jacob Collier with like him using uh, like half notes or using half tones and stuff. And he, he, he like says it's like it's just you just gather tools for your tool belt. So when you want to express yourself, you can say like, mm-hmm. oh, I have the perfect tool to do that. Right. Like I know exactly mm-hmm. like the way that I want to express myself. Mm-hmm. So by mm-hmm. gathering all these things, it is like just it makes it easier when the time comes. It doesn't necessarily have to be like. I'm going to use this. I'm going to use harmonics for every song I play. No, it's like you got to, you just hold it on to it for when it's like, oh, that song would be yeah. good, right? Like, I think uh, we always go back to Abe, right? Abe playing the that uh, sc- uh, the Arabian scale while you guys were jamming yeah, Breezin. Arabic scale. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, I- I'm sure like for other songs, Abe wouldn't be like, you know what? I'm going to bust it out right now. I'm going to bust it out for all these songs. <laughs> I think he like he probably had it in his tool belt and he's just like, this is a cool time to use this right now, you know? And <laughs> he, he knew the perfect audience where you guys would probably be like, what did you just do? That was amazing, right? <laughs> yeah, so. it was for us. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't think anybody else would have. I mean, they would have heard it and caught it. But the magnitude of like yeah. how great that was was really appreciated by like me and Kale were like that what do we what because <laughs> yeah. like, as soon as you don't like, bring a gun to a knife yeah. like guy because <laughs> <laughs> because as soon as uh you guys stopped jamming right like you guys were mm-hmm. on abe with like what was that oh, like why why did you do that what that's crazy yeah <laughs> yeah so it, it is i'll be prepared next time though i got prepared there (laughs) but i i feel sometimes like i'm that you know like that 
uh, that middle aged dad in his garage with all his fancy tools. I'm like, check out my tool. Like, you know, check out, mm-hmm. like look at me use my tool. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. for me, that's like what the tools are. Like, see, see, isn't it cool? <laughs> we hammer this thing with my awesome hammer. <laughs> it's a very tiny hammer for only a very specific thing. But if you ever have to do that one thing, you got the hammer. <laughs> It's like like exactly. nobody else cares, but then hammer aficionados are like, oh, where oh, did you man. get? That's Italian, right? Like, <laughs> the, yeah. Only the people that know care. Yeah, yeah. I, I know for like or for like YouTube cooking shows, kind of the thing now is like the tiny whisk is like you get a whisk that it's just it's. Yeah, it's like absurd with how small it is. I'm like, <laughs> why would you even use it? But guys are like, you use it for like if you crack one egg and you need to whisk one egg, and you just <laughs> yeah. use it in a small bowl. And it's yeah. like, oh, you can't forget the tiny whisk. But yeah, it is like, it's yeah. you have no idea how useful that tiny whisk is. Because <laughs> I I just heard about it just now, and I'm like, yeah. That makes sense because the because <laughs> you know I don't always want to bring a glass bowl out. And that's that's the you big know, glass what those bowl. regular yeah. That's yeah. what those regular size whisks are you know meant to use it for. But what if I just want to use you know like the little ramen bowl that I have that I bought from Walmart? You know what I mean? Like I just want to use that. One. <laughs> I wanna... it's, it's too small for my regular whisk. I want to say uh, binging with Babish. He has like tattoos on his arms of like cooking utensils, and one yeah. of the tattoos is a tiny whisk. I think. Because he he uses it, and that's kind of like uh-huh. that's one of the things like he's become known for is like people call out, "Oh, tiny whisk! You gotta use a tiny whisk!" <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Ah, man, I wish I was a person with with enough commitment to like want to tattoo stuff on my body. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not like a like a thing, you know, where like oh, I can't believe I just I wish I had that kind of commitment because yeah. Uh, yeah. Because I would like to tattoo stuff, but just the fact knowing that like I can never erase it like ever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like if I want, yeah. even if I wanted to, and I'm just like then I just back out. Because <laughs> I think <laughs> yeah. once or twice I've like I was right there to getting a tattoo. <laughs> I think that's like a common thread with uh, cooks or chefs is they get mm-hmm. tattoos of like oh this is my favorite knife or I've seen them get yeah. like some guys explain like. Oh, I love this. Like, this is a special herb or a special mm-hmm. plant that I love, and that's why I got it tattooed on my arm. Mm-hmm. But can you imagine the equivalent for musicians being like, "I got, um, I got. This is my favorite string winder. It it got tattooed on my arm. <laughs> this is my favorite pick. I got tattooed on my arm. Oh, so good." It's like, I... like, like a like a kamaka or kanilea, you know, like tattoo or something. That would be the equivalent. I, I feel like you know. Hey. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a little bit better, but it's still kind of like, uh, I don't think you can tattoo cool. The coolest thing you can probably tattoo yeah. on yourself is like if you actually get the music staff mm-hmm. and you get music tattooed on yourself. But mm-hmm. I even seen people do like, oh, I got the treble clef tattooed on me, and it's like, <laughs> mm, I don't know, like How about that's. This? That's like music nerds are like, hmm, that's pretty cool. <laughs> but even then, it's like I think music nerds would be like, that's mm. I don't want to tattoo a treble clef on myself <laughs> though. <laughs> let's let's do a ra- I don't I want to do I want to do a random giveaway right now. Whoever can show me the best ukulele related tattoo, well, I'll give them like a set of these. You know, like whatever whichever set that you want, I'll give you a set of these if you can show me. And don't get any new ones. I'm not telling people to get a new like oh, so I can <laughs> win myself a pack. <laughs> just just you know, email us at uh, I guess it'd be questions at ukulele on the ground. Don't forget the s at questions at ukulele on the ground. Um, sh- showing us your your ukulele related tattoo. As we ukulele related and the best one. Um, I'll I'll give a pack of these. How about that? <laughs> I you know what contest I want to run again, but I, I need to like come up with a good uh, good prize is the bling for your thing contest. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I was watching the old episodes and uh-huh. um, I, I have that little cactar here, you know, like hanging yep. on my on my ukulele, and see like we ran the last bling for your thing contest like uh, ten years ago or like over ten <laughs> years ago, and like. <laughs> It was some crazy, like someone like hung like a, a like a vacuum cleaner from there. <laughs> like it was, yeah. it got super intense. I want to do that again, but I don't know what to you know what to, what to give away so that people like send us pictures and stuff. But I'll, I'll think of something. In, uh, but, uh, I want to run that contest again. 
you know um people are professional seamstresses they get uh yeah rulers tattooed on their thumbs so when yeah. they're measuring out fabric or they need to do certain things they just pull it against their thumb right and then they cut there or they make a mark mm -hmm. just to make it easy so it's like oh that's pretty that's actually pretty smart like practical it, yeah that's if cool. you do that every single day like and mm -hmm. that's your job like yeah instead of grabbing something else or doing something else that is pretty mm -hmm. smart but i saw what like, if you gain or lose weight though you know like and it just like stretches out your i guess skin. you just gotta <laughs> yeah you gotta redo it or something I saw, <laughs> so i saw somebody who uh they're like a bass fisherman and they got a ruler tattooed on their leg so they can measure the length of the bass <laughs> Can you imagine like the equivalent for like ukulele or guitar, where it's like if you're like a luthier and you have like the dots th tattooed on your arm to know where <laughs> on the fretboard you gotta put inlays or something, or like like a radius or something. Like oh, it has to be mm -hmm. this. It has to have this curve to hit. <laughs> <laughs> or you could have like your basic chords like all tattooed <laughs> on this side of your arm. So like when you're looking, like yeah. that, you know, like people are like oh whatever like d I know. it's probably easier to just memorize the chords <laughs> less painful. i don't know I don't yeah know. it's much less painful yeah nah we're talking commitments Aaron. See, yeah that's, this is why yeah. we don't have tattoos man that's because like, <laughs> it'll be just easier to you know to just memorize it but some people are like, a... no i'm committed to this thing <laughs> i'm gonna get it in my arm you know like, that's, that's you get why. a get a tattoo of a very rarely used tattoo oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah very rarely used cord <laughs> that there's only one instance and yeah i know exactly how to do it now I mean, if you're cool enough to have your, you know, like to figure out a cool chord, like like the Hendrix chords. So I could see like oh, uh, if Hendrix had a tattoo of the Hendrix chord. I don't know. Be like, yeah, well, this is the chord. I'm pretty sure he wouldn't. Me. I'm just yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that's that's something I'm like, yeah, I made this. Like I, I feel like know, even then, I don't know if I would commit to that either. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Like I feel like Hendrix would like people would be like, oh, Jimmy, I got your tattoo or I got your chord tattooed on me. I feel like he would be like, why? <laughs> yeah that's that's not that cool dude i just saw uh, yeah. devin in the chat he said that he's seen people get the circle of fits tattooed on them it's like mm -hmm. i should have gotten that tattooed for the last time you you asked me the circle of fits <laughs> i could have just looked down at my arm yeah see practical <laughs> yeah i don't need to remember it i'll just yeah look down but yeah, for first person to, uh, or, you know, we'll run it for a week. If nobody sends in anything, then I'm actually glad because that means like nobody put any like, <laughs> necessary tattoos in their body. But, you know, if they did. It has to I be mean, their own tattoo? Yeah, it has to be or their own tattoo. Could, could they yeah, take yeah. a picture of somebody else? Or maybe, yeah. Yeah, I guess, it, you know, as long as you took the picture. How about that? <laughs> as long as you take a picture and you show me. It's yeah. like, and bonus points. I'll give you two packs if you show so you me can share it underground with... related tattoo. <laughs> I'll give you a whole box <laughs> if that's the, you know, like if that's the that's like no, no, no I don't want to do that. I'm before like, oh, see, I tattooed this. Like you shouldn't have, but here's the box. I guess. But I'll give you two packs if it's an ukulele underground related tattoo. It'll be funny if we get um, if we get two mm -hmm. people who send in the same tattoo because one person took a picture of their friend. And then their friend was like, oh, I'm going to send in a... I'm well, only one of them can win, you know? <laughs> so who, who do we know who actually has a tattoo? It's like... An ukulele-related tattoo? <laughs> yeah, or, you know, if it's like, if it's their actual tattoo or if they're j just mm. taking a picture of somebody else. It's like, you have to take a picture of your, the tattoo and your hand taking <laughs> the picture of the picture of the tattoo. <laughs> so you know that it's you. Yep. I think does not fingers have an ukulele related tattoo like on his arms yeah. and stuff? I, I feel like he does, yeah. And he has mm -hmm. fingers, I think, like tattooed <laughs> or something, something like that. That's cool. I get. I, I mean, if you're if that's your, you know, you're committed to, I can't, I can't think about like being committed to something that much that like, oh, this is permanent. Like, I, yeah. You know. <laughs> well, you're you're the type of person that gets into stuff like hardcore and then like the next year it's not <laughs> you're not, <laughs> not into it that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i could see why i could kind of see yeah, why yeah. i just i can't i can't dive in head first to you know to to anything like that because i'm too maybe add with you know with some things yeah, you know I mean? like i just you're yeah, like cardistry is life right now <laughs> <laughs> it still is Me, and then, we just yeah. we're just like 
we just don't talk about it like around other people now because we're like you know i now notice how weird we sound like when we talk about <laughs> cardistry <laughs> but yeah like, did you it, did you pre-order your your verts by the way kahai speaking of which yeah yeah well after you oh, told me you get a, did you get a did you get a brick uh no i i didn't get a brick but i don't want to say how much i got because it's embarrassing <laughs> it's, it's a little too much for it to be yeah to 3d to, design man. i can't i, I I'll, I'll tell you right now i bought three which yeah is, which is a which is a respectable number <laughs> yeah that's that i also bought three and then maybe some extra ones you know <laughs> I didn't buy Three a brick though. Bricks I, didn't, of it. <laughs> I didn't buy a brick. I held back. I didn't buy a brick. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Sorry. Right. Yeah, uh, see, we just we just hold back. <laughs> yeah. Talking about cardistry now. Anyway, you know um, how um you said that fingers has fingers tattooed on him. Yeah. What wasn't one of the guys in Sons of Hawaii named to- like Toes or something? Toes. Yeah, I think so. He, he was. Tolls? Yeah, I, I, he was their uh, slide guitarist, I think. So, uh, like, I want to say, though, like, that is not something you can, even though that's your nickname, right? You can't get that <laughs> tattooed on you because <laughs> that, that's not even, that's not even related to you playing slide guitar or you playing ukulele, so. I don't know. Like, I, I have a friend, uh, her dad's um, nickname was Snaps, and he has the word Snaps tattooed on his arm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because that's his nickname, and it's like. Because I, I asked, I was like, well, why, do you, why does your dad have snaps tattooed? I was like, oh, that's his nickname. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I always give that kind of skeptical look. But yeah, I wish I was somebody who had that kind of commitment. You know, it's just internally, I'm a little jealous. Because <laughs> I can't, yeah, I can't just have my mind set on something so, you know, like so definite that like that I would get it tattooed on you know, on, on my body. I don't know. I, yeah. I always Same told here. Yeah. I always told my mom <laughs> that I would go in and get the cliche mom tattoo with a heart around it, right? Like, get yeah. that. If yeah. she went in at the same time with me and got a son tattoo <laughs> with a heart inside of a heart. So that's that's the only time I would get that. Would you get a friend tattoo if I went with you and I got a friend tattoo? Uh, <laughs> Son of mom and son. Can we can we get best this? friends? <laughs> best friends tattoo. Can we get like the matching tattoos where if you like hold hands or you like put your <laughs> pinkies together, it makes something. <laughs> yes. 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 Please. Okay. <laughs> Next week we'll come back with our tattoos. <laughs> our matching tattoos. Uh, anyway, we are way past our, you know, <laughs> our our time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Once again, this is live. So you guys want to join us in one of these live sessions where we guys kind of talk. Uh, make sure to sign up for UU Plus. And uh, yeah, you can attend this live. You can ask us questions and stuff. But if you just want to ask us questions, feel free to do so via email, via Ukulele on the ground, via UU Plus forums, whatever. You can send us videos, you know, if you guys want us to check out whatever you guys want us to check out our comments on. Um, <clears throat> thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. Tomorrow, we do have a little Friday Live Jam. And like I mentioned earlier, please subscribe to our new Play Along channel. What's Going On by Marvin Gaye was just uploaded this week. Uh, make sure you check that out. Some beautiful, beautiful chords in that. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those songs that like yeah, rings pretty true nowadays. So I hope you guys enjoy. Make sure you check that out and subscribe. All right, everyone. Aloha. See you next time. Stick around for 101 coaching.